I'm just to give you a plan of what we're going to talk about. I'm going to begin by talking about what's so great about ZNO, why we're having this webinar, in fact, why we did the report. Then look at our market forecast and show what um, and discuss what they're showing. Uh, and then spend most of the rest of the, the uh, time allotted to us discussing where the opportunities are, beginning with the opportunities that come out of mature applications within electronics, such as coatings, and then moving on to perhaps the more exciting areas, um, uh, looking at uh, actual ZNO devices, such as thin film transistors and LEDs, and also uh, the use of ZNO in electrode applications and, and specifically as an ITO replacement. Uh, and then um, finally, we're going to go into slightly more futuristic stuff. We're going to look at transparent electronics, for instance, uh, and some of the new sensor technology and nanotechnology related developments that are going on within the ZNO environment. And then, th and then uh, concluding, um, and though it doesn't mention it here, we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, trends in manufacturing for ZNO, as well as the companies uh, themselves that uh, look like they will be able to, in a position to be able to exploit some of the opportunities we talked about earlier. Moving on then um, to slide five, I want to begin by talking, really just providing a list of all the wonderful things that uh, ZNO has to offer within electronics. And what makes it particularly fascinating is ZNO. I mean, this list looks a little bit like the kind of list you might provide for some exotic nanomaterial or a carbon nanotube or something like that. But in ZNO is very far from that. It is quite literally a Bronze Age material. Going back 3,000 years, it was uh, used, for instance, in, in various lotions, much as it is today. Uh, of course, they didn't know much about nanotechnology then. But um, we have, as I say, a list of fairly remarkable uh, properties with regard to electronics. Uh, clearly, ZNO is uh, cheap, abundant, safe. Um, as far as the last one goes, uh, the last two go, I should say, consider some of the uh, parallel developments in other wideband and, and compound semiconductors. If you look at, say, gallium nitride and gallium arsenide, well, gallium isn't like zinc in terms of its you know, garden variety. Uh, level of, uh, of availability. And if you look at gallium arsenide, well, you know, arsenic is many things, but safe it is not. Um, the, the, you know, probably the, the single most important property of ZNO that's got the interest in, in it in um, electronics is its uh, transparency. And we're coming back to talking about how that can be used. Uh, it has been used as an ITO replacement um, and I think that has limited applications, actually, but there seem to be uh, somewhat futuristic applications and a few near-term applications where transparent electronics may actually uh, generate uh, significant revenues. Um, it also has interesting UV properties, uh, hence the use of ZNO in sunscreen. Um, so you find it in UV coating, and increasingly, and I'll be talking a little bit about this in, the min in a minute, we you see it in solid state or you will see it really in solid state UV d devices. And we think that there's a, a fairly considerable potential there. Um, and uh, ZNO is also a conductor. Uh, that takes us back to the electrodes. Uh, and actually, uh, prefacing something I'm going to be saying later on, the big opportunity there really is in certain parts of the thin film photovoltaics areas. Um, and it is also a semiconductor. Um, it, it, not just transparency is driving the interest in ZNO, but also uh, use in thin film and LEDs, uh, clearly triple semiconductor applications. Um, and the, the issue there, I'm talking about it a little bit in the moment, is whether you can really take this beyond the N-type semiconductor uh, environment. Uh, so far, that's unclear. Uh, finding a stable P-type semiconductor has proved very tricky. And without that, there is certainly a limit on, on what you can do. Um, you know, you, you aren't going to get to clearly to a ZNO CMOS, as it were. Um, the other interesting, yet another interesting property of, of ZNO is that it is an, what, what we call here an extreme material, which is to say it's rad hard and thermally resilient. Um, that makes it obviously a very acceptable material in certain kinds of medical uh, environments, same radiology. Uh, but also in, in, in the military, and, um, and as far as the thermally resilient uh, application goes, it has 
uh, sort of parallel applications of what's currently being done with silicon carbide in power electronics, where some parts of those power electronics uh, need very high thermal resi resilience uh, and where the levels of cooling are, are being reached. Um, finally, uh, ZNO is an interesting nanomaterial. It's very easy to make into important nanostructures and also shows some potential because of its ferromagnetic properties in, in spintronics. 